The moment is here, you can stop your search. It's Comics by Birch. Hey everybody, this is Birch. Um, there was recently a post on uh, Twitter. This isn't a Twitter thing, I promise. This actually has nothing to do with Twitter. Uh, I promise you, other other than the, the origin of the initial idea came out. But anyway, it's, there's no Twitter shit here. Anyway, uh, the, the post came out, and it showed pictures of Spider-Man and MJ, and Batwoman, Bat, Batwoman Batman, and Catwoman. And uh, the basic premise was, you know, editorial keeps screwing these characters, and has done just a, a massive, you know, injustice to, you know, to, to these to these you know these characters these relationships and the, the idea behind that is that spider-man was married to mj and it was a relationship that by and large a lot of comic fans liked now i've talked to people at marvel uh, i've read stuff from nick lowe and and others and i've uh marvel maintains always maintains that a lot of people did not like the spider-man mj marriage now i'm not going to pretend i went around and surveyed every single person who was a comic reader but i can tell you the demographics for my shop and in the conversations that went on for 20 years, uh, were, I would say, 90% in favor of the marriage. 90%. Or at the very least, I, what's funny is, I, uh, for a lot of people, it wasn't necessarily the marriage. It was the relationship. So I do think, uh, you know, it, it would have made no sense in the comic, but if you would have had them not married, but still dating, still have it be a couple, uh, most of the people would be fine. Generally speaking, most it's it's it, it's kind of there's a bunch of red herrings in this topic. Uh, we, we'll get to more of them, but one of them is this idea of like, well, fans just want to marry. They just it doesn't make sense to them to be married, and they, they go off and on and on and on. But it really it the, it's the relationship. Definitely, the relationship is where the heart of it is. Um, but the other thing that you see is a lot of people will you know point the finger at Joe Casada, and that that one's more fair because he was in a leadership position. But, you know, more recently, Dan Slott, you know, Zeb Wells. What's weird, people started to, uh, to toy figure Nick Spencer. I, I, you know, personal opinion here, I think the Nick Spencer Spider-Man run was quite a bit better than the Dan Slott run. And uh, decently better than the, then not just, sorry, not decently better. It's, it's incomplete. You know, we've, we've just seen a little bit of it. But I, I definitely like the Spencer run better than the, the Wells run. And over at Batman, they all the blame goes to Tom King. Tom King, uh, you know, wrecked the, uh, you know, he he pulled the rug out from under us. Bat Cat thing was all you know, him, and just just you know, it's basically the blame is settled on the writers. And so I was surprised. So by the way, this video is also not in defense of those people. They wrote the stories; it's fine. But I thought the premise in this this Twitter post or his X post, I guess, uh, that hey, it's editorial's fault had a lot of merit. Because if you really dig into uh, what's been said and, and kind of what a lot of writers have been told, and again, you could choose to believe them or not, there is an editorial mandate that you basically have to put the toys back in the toy box when you're done or revert to the status quo. You can't go too far from it. And this is, uh, this is a, an area where editorial may come up with an idea, like say, we're going to kill Alfred and it will stick. But they, you know, they have, but in general, with things like Spider Man, it's like, hey, you can fool around, you can tease, you can have them date for a while, but then you got to, you do all the things you want. But we're going to need to have it back to kind of lovable loser Peter Parker who has bad luck and uh, Batman, Catwoman, you know, kind of chasing each other around, flirty, flirty, but not actually, you know, in a committed relationship. And that's consistent. We've heard that that's what editorial expects, demands, suggests to the writers, that they really won't let the writers stray outside of that. And this is this is many writers, many artists, many different voices have confirmed this over the years. So I do think there's there's a lot of merit to say, hey, you know, it's in in many cases this is a publisher, an editorial mandate that's keeping us trapped in limbo. The part that makes me crazy, or the part that that really frustrates me is then you know this this is what editorial says hey you have to keep things the way they are hey you can't you know you can't go back you can't put the marriage back together you can't you, it's got to be it, in, in a weird way because this is the argument that comes out it's old comic fans are just complaining they're complaining 
that they want comics never to change. That's the complaint. But let's examine that for a minute because it's not true, or at least the actions don't suggest this. When basically they said, we want to go back to this, uh, you know, neutral status quo for Batman Catwoman. It, that's not sticking with that, that. That's not changing anything. That is literally going back to the previous 50 odd years of the status quo. When you say we're going to take uh, Peter and MJ's marriage away and we're not going to have them together, that is not, you know, going back to the past. That, that, or sorry, that is exactly going back to the past. There was, there's decades of comics where Peter was single. And in the entire course of Peter's, you know, time, He's been single and the lovable loser a lot more than he was married. If you just look at raw years and comics put out. So when they say, hey, you know, these dumb fans just always want to you know, keep things from ever changing. But the solution is to establish a status quo that's been the status quo forever. Who exactly is afraid of change? Because I don't think it's the fans. Peter Parker being in a committed relationship with MJ is a change, especially since it's been so long. It's not just giving up and going back to the way it was. It is a change. Likewise, Batman in a relationship with Catwoman is definitely a change. We saw a little bit of it during Tom King's run, but generally speaking, we've seen you know not much of them as a true couple. So it, it, it's just, it's you can't have your cake and eat it too. It doesn't make any sense. So we're going to say simultaneously, A, you know, comics need to go back to the way they always have been. You can't, you have to put the toys back in the toy box. This is something that's being said. But you're also going to say, and the fans that don't accept it are stuck in the past. And that's why what we're going to do is not give them what they want and stick the comics in the past. What? That, that, that makes no sense. And, and it also, I think it vastly misrepresents what the fans have been asking for. The fans are not saying, hey, comics could ever change. In fact, the fans tend to reward comics that change in an effective way. They rewarded the X-Men when the team turned over. There's, again, this retconning of history. I've also seen some people say, oh, man, there are so many fans that are super pissed. And, you know, the new X-Men team, they're like, we want, we want Cyclops, Beast, Angel, Iceman, and Gene Brain. We will accept nothing else, sir. But that, that not not true. Again, go dig up those comics, look at the letters, look at where the X-Men comics were at the time, which was doing a lot of reprints before they made that change. There was not this big anger outcry. There were not years of angry fans at conventions going, damn it, bring back the all white X-Men. That's the X-Men I like. Especially that one that was super white. Bobby Drake, who's also incredibly straight and that will never change. That's, that, that's not what is being said. Fans reward that behavior. They rewarded Superman getting married. They rewarded, uh, you know, the, the your iterations of Green Lantern. John Stewart, uh, again, popular. People liked it. Rhodey liked it. The only times the fans have really bitched about change and rejected it wholesale and gotten angry about it is when the change comes abruptly out of nowhere and often when it feels like a huge marketing gimmick. Hey! There's a new Blade's Daughter comic, and you're going to like it because she's better than Blade. And she's smarter, too. And she's different. And probably not binary, right? Whatever. But you're going to definitely have to read this comic because it's better than the one before. Like, why the, why the fuck would you sell it that way? That's a stupid way to sell it. And yeah, that kind of change gets rejected by fans, for sure. But it's, it's, not, it's not people who just hate change. It's that your change is stupid. And again, it, this isn't really, I, I, I guess you could say that whether it's stupid or not is subjective. There may be some of you in my audience who love the Blade's Daughter comic and more power to you if you did. But the non-subjective part, the, the fact part, the objective part, is that these changes came suddenly. A lot of the, uh, the changes that were accepted, big changes like the X-Men, like, like Rhodey, they were built over time. You had lots of comics to explain it. They made sure to balance. I mean, even the X-Men, where you had a brand new team came out of nowhere, took great pains to make sure it was connected to the old title, and it kept some of the original characters as well for a period of time to make sure that the transition happened naturally. It's way better than Bendis takes over Iron Man. It's like, well, let's just fuck around for a couple issues doing nothing in particular, and 
bringing in Spider-Man's former girlfriend for some reason into the mix. And oh, now Tony's dead. And now it's, we got Riri in here. Why not? Uh, people reject changes like that. People tend to reject any kind of thing that smells phony, like marketing, like, hey, this is the best comic ever. Or when I, one thing that drives me absolutely crazy is when publishers build things like smash hit artist person you've never heard of on this book that we're going to charge an extra two dollars for. That, that nobody yet. Yeah, it's not a smash hit. Everybody's talking about this new title. It's, that nobody is talking about. It. That stuff smells fake and people don't respond well to fake. And that's what I think the publishers need to get through their heads with a lot of this stuff is be authentic. Here's our comic. Hey, we're going to lead to a big change. The comic fans love it when writers come in going, hey, I've got an idea for a two-year arc and I'm going to lay some seeds here and we're going to try to tell some good stories and I'm definitely going to surprise you. There's going to be some surprises in here, but trust me, it's going to be a bit. They like that kind of stuff. They don't like it when, uh, you know, when Zeb Wells goes out and says, oh, man, people are really going to hate me because this is the most shocking moment in the history of all of Spider-Man. You're not going to believe it. I'm not going to be able to come to cons. So he's going to punch me in the face because my comic is so amazing. I, oh, like, you, 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 I like, it's, it's the most controversial thing you've ever seen. That just pisses people off, especially when the end result of that is, oh, yeah, I'm going to heavily tease. It's MJ we're going to kill. But no, it's, it's Miss Marvel. By the way, we're going to bring her back 30 days later. No problem. That's the stuff that drives people crazy. That's the change that people reject. Otherwise, yeah, comic fans will forgive you if you have good change, for sure. But it also, I mean, you know, the other part to all this is, look, if you've got a loud part of your fan base saying, hey, you know what? We would like Batman and Catwoman to uh, be married and be in a couple. We would like Peter and Mary Jane to be married, too. We would buy those comics. That's what we want. Why would you look at that and go, hmm, do you know what? We're going to fuck those fans. Why would, why would you do that? I mean, what, that's the definition of like picking the dumbest possible fight. Your fans are, are your customers are going, hey, here's some things you'd like. And you're like, thank you for that input. Now, fuck off. What, why? why would, some of, um, you know, and, and by the way, I've met the guy. He's not a, a giant prick in real life, I promise. But when you read some of the stuff like Nick Lowe writes, you're like, well, why in the holy hell? Who, who, who let this get printed? Why are you doing this? I, I mean, it, it, it defies all reason. It's, it's walking around with a giant kick me sign and then just randomly spitting at people on the street. You're like, well, clearly you can't get your ass beat if you behave this way. You're behaving like a prick. I, I don't get the antagonism behind these moves. And I also, you know, for what it's worth, and this is not a big defense of Tom King, but hey, you know, it croc strikes this crack twice a day or something like that. But, uh, you know, Tom King, who I think deserved everything he got with a lot of his shenanigans and dumb shit. I mean, he did the same like, my God, this issue of Batman is so controversial that I had to hire a bodyguard who's not a bodyguard at all, but a friend. And I'm just going to have him walk around and make it seem like I'm in danger in a convention where the audience is you know either 100 percent with me no matter what i do or could care less because they're just there for costumes uh it, he definitely asked for it but i do think that it was a little shady that editorial made a bunch of calls around alfred around the wedding around everything else clearly cut the run short all that kind of stuff and then dc it kind of a baller move maybe as i'm thinking about it is like not us that tom king did all this shit it wasn't us i I don't know. That, that's, that is pretty crazy when I think about it. But anyway, uh, change, I guess the summary here, this this video went all over the place. Uh, I, I'll throw in a couple more things. You know, screw Arby's. No, it has never been good. Has Arby's ever been good? No, is the answer. No. You're either super hungry or you're young and you didn't, you didn't know what you didn't know what good food was. Or it was good value. I'll give it that. I also remember the uh, five Arby's for $5. I, I totally remember that. That was a good deal. Five Arby's for five bucks, yeah. Except you're eating trash. So that that that's the only problem. That's the only flaw in that deal. It's like, 
it's not worth it's not worth five cents, let alone five dollars. But you know, I, I mean, comparatively, if you're looking at fast food, it's like, well, it seems like a great deal. And then you realize it's not actually meat; it's it's gross, disgusting shit. Is what it is. But anyway, um, in summary, a lot of fans like change; they honestly do, and and you see that hit over and over and over in history and comics. Fans will respond well to change. Fans respond poorly to marketing gimmicks being told they have to like something or being insulted about why they don't like something. And, uh, you know, and, and why make life tough for yourself? If you're Marvel right now and you're having some issues, you know, you're, you're not getting that new audience that you want. You've got, you seem to have pissed off a lot of your older audience, which you don't want, but you grudgingly need because they pay you. Again, you're publishing 80 books. I've made this point before. Just give the fans one. Just, just give in to the fans on something. Yeah, Nick, swallow your pride. Let the marriage go back together. See what happens. I mean, look, if you put it out and then it turns out you're right, all these people come out of the woodwork like, how dare you? We like Peter Parker single. How dare you do this? If that's what you have after nine months, I, I who can, they just reveal it was a scroll all along and just, just, Oh, we're going to screw with Peter again. It's like he was not actually, his marriage didn't actually get restored. It was all a big trick from Loki or whatever dumb fucking thing you want to do. Why not? But see, because my suspicion is if you want to sell 250,000 copies of a comic, then I've said this before, four issue limited series. One more day, one more another day, a four issue limited series. With a promise that, hey, we're gonna we're gonna just suck it. You win. We're gonna give you what you want. Yeah, that thing would sell a million copies. The four issues would sell a quarter million. You'd do five hundred variant covers. I'm telling that's it's easy money. So at some point, if you're Nick Lowe, you do have to sit down in front of the mirror and go, Hey, it is fun, uh is it is fun screwing people on social media. I've had a good run doing that. You know, Tom Brady Fort's had my back. But maybe Maybe it's time to just go, you know what? I'm going to give the fans what they want. They're all going to they're going to go on Twitter and be like, "Ah ha ha, we got Nick Lowe to do what he wants." And he goes, "And meanwhile, I'll be sitting at home with my bonus and money, just rolling around naked in those dollars. That's what I'll be doing cuz I'm Nick Lowe, guy who likes to roll in money." That's that's but why not just just why not? Why not give yourself that moment? I mean, <laughs> just feels like you're working really hard to to get not where you want to go but i don't know that what what do i do anyway that's enough silly voices and comments out of me um let me know your comments below like and subscribe hey why don't you get a friend to subscribe it's great perch content you'll love it thanks for listening